So, all right, concentration is all about how much stuff we have. Let's draw a picture of some stuff. This is going to be a crystal of salt, and the salt's going to be sodium chloride, NaCl. And then I'm going to compare that to a larger chunk of salt, and this right here is going to be my larger chunk of salt. Now, say I add the small amount of salt to a beaker full of some water. When I do that, then I have what's called a name that describes who's who. The water before the salt falls in it is called a solvent. The salt before it gets tossed into the water is called a solute. When the two of them come together, we call it a solution. That's the idea behind it. Now, what I'm going to be illustrating right here, and you're going to be drawing, is you're going to be drawing the same beaker twice. So I have one beaker that has approximately 2.0 liters, and this one has 2.0 liters. But I'm obviously dumping a lot of salt in one beaker on the right and very little salt in the beaker on the left. What that does is it causes a different amount of stuff to be in my solution. That stuff we refer to as a solute, and the amount of stuff we refer to as concentration. We're going to draw dots to represent the amount of stuff. This is obviously very little salt. So you're just drawing a couple of dots spread out, fairly diffuse. And then on the other one, we dumped a lot of salt in it. Obviously, draw a lot of dots. Now we have a name for how much stuff is in our solution. We call it concentration. The beaker on the right is obviously the one that has a higher concentration. Now, the thing that people get confused about is that when we're counting amounts of stuff, we seem to think that when we're counting amounts of stuff that we're talking about how much liquid is there. It's not the amount of liquid, the solution, that's there. It's how much stuff that's in the solution, dissolved in the solution, that actually matters in chemistry. And that's what we refer to as concentration. The beaker on the left obviously has a lower concentration in comparison to the beaker on the right. So what we're seeing is that concentration, the amount of stuff there, is a proportion, not a pure quantity. So it's a proportion between the amount of solute there is in comparison to the amount of solvent. So concentration is the amount of solute divided by the amount of solvent. I'm going to put a box around it because this is the definition that we're working with today. Today your learning goal is to figure out how much solute there is per solvent. And that, of course, is called concentration. Do you guys have any questions or comments about anything that I've written so far? All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to learn some units for concentration. There are several units that we work with. The biggest one is molarity. We use molarity more than anything else. There's another one which we use, which is called percentage. That's what you see in stores. So we're going to put molarity down, and we have percentage. And then we're going to put the last one, which is parts per million. Parts per million, or sometimes parts per billion, is what you guys see as environmental measurements of how many toxins are in our air or in our water. Another one that we're not going to use is called molality, but I'm not going to write it down because you're not required to know. Today, we're focusing on how to calculate molarity and nothing more. It's all about measuring how much stuff is in our solution, and we're measuring the amount of stuff that's in our solution with this unit we call molarity. And that's the next part I'm going to move to. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do an example problem where we work with this unit right here, molarity, uh, to figure out how much stuff is in our solution. Uh, the example problem that I'm going to give you is a very common one. So you're going to write EX, for example, and then say I have, I don't know, 5 grams of sodium chloride. 5 grams NaCl is dissolved in 1.5 liters. What's the concentration of molarity?
Now, to solve this problem, we need to know something a little bit more about <coughs> molarity. Uh, molarity is solute per solvent, but more specifically, molarity is the amount in moles per liters. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out the given information, and then I'm going to be giving you a formula that you're going to be using quite often to solve problems dealing with how much stuff is in our drink. The formula for this problem is going to be used to calculate molarity. Molarity is always going to be defined as the amount of moles of solute divided by the liters of solvent. So it's really important to pay attention to the difference between solute and solvent. We also have a very good way of simplifying uh, this formula. Molarity, we use a capital M to represent molarity. Moles, you already know, is abbreviated with mole. And liters is abbreviated with L. So this is the formula that we're working with in this particular problem. It's a pretty simple one. Now, when I look at my given information, I notice that in my given information, I already know my volume. I already know what that is. I don't quite know what moles is, but I am given grams. So what this means is that I have to do an additional conversion. I have to take my grams of sodium chloride and convert it in my work to moles. So I'm going to write out 5 grams NaCl, and I have to change it into moles so that I can calculate the molarity. So to do this mole step right here, I'm doing that conversion right now. So it's 5 grams NaCl. It's a single step. If you remember the mole road going between mass and moles, moles and mass, requires <coughs> molar mass from the periodic table. So it's 5 grams NaCl, and I want it to pop out as moles of NaCl. What I'm going to, I write on top. I'm not going to write NaCl because that doesn't change, but I am going to write moles because that's changing. And then I want to cancel out grams, so I'm writing grams on bottom. This here is my molar mass, and you should remember this comes from the periodic table. So I go to the periodic table for sodium, and I go to the periodic table for chlorine, and I have to look up their masses. For sodium, it's 22.99. For chlorine, it's 35.45. When I add those two values up, that gives me the molar mass for this substance, and I find that that number is 58.44. And remember, these numbers on the periodic table are molar mass, so that's always the amount of grams per mole. That means that moles, I'm always going to write it down as 1. Do we have any questions so far? So the grams cancel out, should be familiar, 5 divided by 58.44, and that gives me a number of moles as 0.09 moles. I'm rounding to sig figs on this problem, so if you're wondering why it didn't come out 0.08555, it's because I'm rounding to sig figs. So now I have the information I need to solve the problem. I have the moles, I have the liters, which I'm putting in boxes right here, which I can now plug into my formula to figure out molarity. Does anyone have any questions about that? So the next step is going to be 5 grams divided by, oh wait, not 5 grams. Could someone raise their hand and tell me what Barron's mistake was because I started writing way too fast? Shelby? Be moles because it's moles divided by liters. So I'm going to write out 0 0.09 moles divided by the amount of volume, which is 1.5 liters. Do that math right there. I end up with a molarity of 0 0.06, and I can write it as a capital M. That tells me that's my concentration. And now you know what that capital M is because you've seen the capital M many times before on acids and bases that we use in labs, and that's referring to how strong it is in concentration. And that's our answer. That's all you have to know how to do. Do you guys have any questions about that? All right. Now, 